Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. Um, the message that I have today is let us walk circumspectly. Now, you know, this is towards the end of the message, you know, when God told me to do this. Um, but I couldn't do it unless I had the preceding verses. So, you know, a lot of times you can pull them out and do a sermon on But this one, I just wanted to make sure that we got the full hit of it. So we're going to be in Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 17. And if you notice, there's no cars up there. So I just want you to show, I'm going to show you one. Here's a nice beauty, a little 70 challenger for you Mopar guys. All right, God bless you. All right, so we're going to be in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to read over here. There's 17 verses, so just bear with me. Grab your Bibles, and let's go for it. So welcome back. It says this, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Amen. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes in darkness, but now, or some, let me rephrase that. For you, you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye in light, or light in the Lord. Walk as children in the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness, proving what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does make it manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then, here's my text here, See then, you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. And finally, verse 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What a great bunch of scriptures. So we're going to back up. I'll try to get through this. i got a lot of content. It says, be there as four followers. You know what? I mean, some of your Bibles might already have it trans transcribed as followers. You know, uh, or excuse me, followers of God as dear children. Some of it says imitators. Okay, so the followers here is an imitator. And it means an imitator to follow as a pattern. Okay, model or example. Amen? So that's what? Who's our example? Jesus Christ. Of God, all right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit refers to the things of God. That's important. His counsels, His interests, and things that are due Him. Amen? Verse 2. And walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and has given Himself for us an offering, all hallelujah, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Now that walk. Now anytime you see walk a lot of times in the Hebrew or the Greek, in this case it's the Greek, it means to regulate your life or conduct yourself in what? In love. And that word here is agape. And that means affection, goodwill, benevolence, brotherly love. The love of our neighbor or brotherly affection. You know, and when it comes to God, that word agape, it's what he deems necessary for the one being loved. In other words, he's going to make decisions for us based on what he feels is necessary. Amen? That's what it means in there. It's a real good word. But then it says it's Christ has loved us. Now that's another Greek word which means agapeo. And here, here's what it means. To be fond of, to love dearly, indicating of a direction of the will and finding one's joy in something and, or someone. Someone's us. Now the interesting thing is a direction of the will and finding one's joy in something. That's the word love here is the same word as used in John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? That whosoever believeth in and so on. So that word love, he well, he had his he found joy in all of us and he gave us, the Father gave us his son. Amen. And that's awesome. So this is not, you know, listen, this is not a suggestion. All right. It's, you know, we, we we need to conduct our lives a way worthy of our calling. Amen. And love and love the brothers and stuff. So then it starts getting in. Now I know I did these a couple weeks ago when I talked about flesh and spirit. However, this is content, and so I'm going to give it again. There's a lot of things in here 
that a lot of day, today's they're accepting as okay. But here's what it says. But fornication and all uncleanness or covenantness, let it be not once named among becoming saints. How many know that's a good idea? Amen. Fornication here, my friends, is word. It looks it looks like it's when you look at it, it's pornea, but it's really por pornia. Again, we're not going to split hairs over there. But here's what this means. And I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. Illicit sexual in intercourse. It means adultery. You guys know what that is. Homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, worship of idols. And back in the day, it was defilement of idolatry, but it also, it was incurred by eating sacrifices offered to idols. Now, that was a big deal years ago. We don't really have that today, but you guys get it. It's idolatry. All right, then you get uncleanness. Now, this is moral uncleanness, lewdness, incontinence, which means failure to restrain your sexual appetite. A lot of that going on today. Or covetedness. What's that? Greedy desire to have more. And I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. There's always an English word in there talking about the word covetedness, and it's called avarice. What that means is the insatiable desire for more. You got you. Know, let it not be named once or mentioned as becometh saints. Now that becometh means eminent and distinguished and proper. Believe me, in God's eyes, we're distinguished because of Christ's blood. Amen. We're justified because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Become a saint. Now, what's a saint? You and I are saints. If you're born again, you're a saint. I know that is, might split hairs with some people, but I'm just telling you the word saint here means most, most holy thing, sharing in God's purity, upright, blameless, and heart of life. How was that happened? It was because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Not that we're righteous. Now, because of his blood, we are justified. Praise the Lord. Now, then it says this in verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. The word filthiness is obscenity, improper conduct, whether in action or deed, nor foolish talking. Um, you ever had foolish talking? You know, it, it, this is what it means. It's that type of speech which betrays a person as foolish, all right, and foul speech it can be, nor jesting. And this is humor, ribaldry, coarse wittiness, or coarse, jo <laughs> coarse joking, excuse me. And, you know, me and my sound guy, we always go back and forth. And I, and it, when I was teaching on this, I was just teasing my head of that. And so the Lord, he said, you know, you got to work on that, Bob. And we started laughing. And I said that in front of the church. We do. You know, we don't want to be to the point where that's the point. No, we want to focus in on Christ, which is not convenient. It means it's not proper, not what is fit or becoming, but rather giving of thanks. How many would agree that we have a lot to be thankful for? Just think, you and I are not going to hell because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That word thanks here, it does mean thankfulness, but it means gratitude. Expressing gratitude to who? To God. Do you thank God for your salvation? Do you thank him for what you have? Look around you. And I just give God thanks for my house and things like that. It's not like I'm living a lavish life, but I'm very grateful for what I have. Verse 5. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. See, Father, we are, excuse me, my friends, we have to check our heart. Whoremonger is a male prostitute, at least in this one. A man who's indulging in unlawful sexual intercourse or fornicator. So it was more in the masculine this time, but it's the word whoremonger is porno. Okay, so in this case it was talking more about a male, but it goes both ways. Unclean person is in thought and in life, and also in a ceremonial sense. Because remember, back in Leviticus, you had to be ceremonially clean to come before the Lord. Now, we are clean because of Jesus Christ, so it didn't mention that. Covetous man, one eager to have more, especially what belongs to others. So you're really coveting because you're looking. Now, that's a tenth of him. You can't do that. It says greedy for gain, but it says greedy of gain, a defrauder for gain, that you'll do anything you defraud just to get it. Who is that? Who is an idolater? A worshiper of false god. You guys know that. A covetous man. That's that's the key in this case. Worshiper of mammon. Amen. What's that? Money. Used of anyone, even Christian, to participate in any way is the worship of the heathen. We can't be like that. Let that be not named as well. Has any inheritance, has any eternal blessedness, or consummated from the kingdom of God, which is to be expected after the visible return of Christ, which he's coming back, and it reads here also as the inheritance of the kingdom of Christ and of God. We can't be like this. God does care what you're doing. Please walk worthy of your calling. Then it says in verse 6, I like this. There's a lot of stuff going goofy around sometimes in the body of Christ. I love them, 
and sometimes you're guilty. Verse 6, let no man deceive you with vain words, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. It can come from the world, but you may have submitted. It sometimes can come through the church. Deceive you. It means to cheat. Don't let the devil cheat you or beguile and seduce into error. Believe, the Bible is true, my friends. Every bit of it's true. I don't care what people are telling you. Oh, I don't think God cares about this. Well, yeah, he does. You know, you heard me say that. So we can say that we we can be deceived by in vain and empty or idle words of others. But here's a couple of things I believe that are deceiving some. You ever thought about what's going on now? Here's a couple, maybe three things that I mentioned. This is not uh, this is not in the Bible, but you get what I'm talking about. How this is how people are thinking today. God doesn't really care about certain sins. Well, yes, he does. He does. And it just grinds me to think, well, I don't think God really cares. He does care. That's kind of like the thoughts today. That the church needs to get with the things of the times. No, the times need to get with the church. How many would agree with that? We need to conform our lives around Christ, not him around us. And then how about there's, oh, there's some good witchcraft and stuff. No, there's not. Folks, listen to me. God is serious about his word. And I know you guys know this, but you might have some people, maybe they're watching this. Don't be dabbling in stuff. Don't be dabbling in the occult. Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So let's read, read the rest of the scripture again. It says, For because of these things cometh the wrath of God on the children of disobedience. How many want to be, you want the wrath of God on you? I don't. This refers to divine judgment to be inflicted upon the wicked. And that's what's used here. But you know what? A lot of us can dabble in things. No, you know, we can't do that. Upon the children of disobedience. That's the ones that are obstinate. Obstinate in opposition to divine will. Whose will? God's will. Amen. Then it says this. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. That means partaker together with them. That's an ob or a joint partaker. Why? For ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. You know, I, well, I said it earlier when I when I read this, sometimes you were in darkness. But it says, it's stronger than that. It says, for ye were sometimes darkness. And may I submit, you and I were at one time before we um, asked Christ into our heart. But now we are the light in the Lord. Amen. Walk as children is light. So sometimes, or formerly, you and I were what? We were in darkness at one time, but we were darkness. Okay, let me tell you what that means. It's a word called scotus. It looks like scotus. It's S-K-O-T-O-S. You can look it up in the Strong's if you want, 4655. And it means ignorance respecting divine things and human duties and the accompanying of ungodliness and immorality. Together, what? This is where you'll end up. Consequent misery in hell. It says that right in the Greek. Consequent misery in hell. So you and I, at one point in our lives, were sometimes one time darkness. We were. But now, we were heading to hell, but now, praise God, we're born again. And we're headed to heaven. Glory to God. But now ye are the light in the Lord. You and I are light. Amen? And that word is phos. P-H-O-S. And it means we have been enlightened by the Lord and the true knowledge of God and spiritual things. And because of that, my friends, oh yeah, it gets sweet. God wants us to walk as children of light. How many know that's true? So there's that word walk again. How? To regulate your life in light. To conduct your oneself in light. In, in light, excuse me. And But here's what it says. To make due use of all opportunity. Of opportunity. Okay, let me give you a side scripture of that. Write this down. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works and that you get the glory. No. And that you glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now light here is the same Greek word. as in Ephesians 5, 8. We just read. Your good works means your acts, your deeds, that which one undertakes to do. So back, to, let's go back to Ephesians 5, 8. We need to walk as children of light. I know I'm moving along quickly, but i got a lot of context. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is what? In all goodness and righteousness. Truth and not in truth. Fruit. What's your fruit? It's very simple, my friend. It's our, our work, our acts, our deeds, that which originate. It comes from something. Where does it come from here? It comes from the fruit of the Spirit. That's where it's at. Don't trust the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what you should be doing and not. you got that tug in your heart. Don't be doing that. Amen. So the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, all unrightness of heart and life, in kindness and righteousness. This is the condition acceptable to God. 
See, we think we can come to him on our terms. No, you come on to God on Jesus Christ's terms. So it means integrity, virtue, virtue, excuse me, purity of life, rightness and correct way of thinking and acting, conformity to what? Claim of a higher authority. Who's the higher authority? God. We need to be emulating him in truth. What is appertaining to truth to God? Not what the world thinks is truth. No, it's what is appertaining to God. And here, it's the duties of man and moral and religious truth, which is the Christian truth. It said that, but that's what it said in the Greek. Verse 10. Now, we need to do this. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Are you walking acceptable? I hope you are. I know we try. I know we fall. But remember, just pick up and go. Don't give up. This word acceptable means well-pleasing. Do what is well-pleasing, acceptable to the Lord, that which God wills and recognizes. It's not what we think is well-pleasing. It's what he thinks, but rather what he commands and what he is pleasing. And again, there's a lot of people that think, well, I don't think God cares about this and that. I mentioned it earlier. He does care. We need to walk according to the way he wants us to. Now it says in verse 11, and I want to park here just for a few minutes. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's a good That's a good scripture. And then it says, but rather reprove them. Okay, what's fellowship? Here it means to become a partaker, kind of similar to what we talked about earlier. A share with something. Don't be in fellowship and with what? The unfruitful or not yielding what is ought to be yield, because we're supposed to yield good works, amen? The things that are unprofitable, producing bad fruit. You guys know what it is. You, ever, you don't like those... I like those green grapes. You like those green grapes? I like them when they're in season. They snap when you eat them and stuff. Did you ever bit into one? It's just a little soft. It's kind of, there's nothing worse than a bad fruit. And so, but this is so unfruitful works of darkness. And what's that mean? Ignorance, respecting divine things and human duties, and the accompanying of our godliness and immorality together with their consequent misery in hell, which we uh, mentioned church before about Scotus. Amen? Or Scotus, excuse me. I said it. A short ball, but rather reprove them. Now, you know what that means, my friends? Let me read it. I'll put the word in and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. All right, now again, we have to be, we have to make sure we do it out of love. It says, but rather reprove them. It means to rebuke, bring to the light, God's light, obviously, find fault with, but rather to expose them and show one his fault. Now, for this is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. All right. Now, I know there's times that we have to discuss things, but you remember, you have to do it in the spirit of love. All right. Now, this came from my Greek word study. Now, this is a long paragraph, but I want you to just listen up. All right. The word shame here. Now, I'm getting into my word study, my word study Greek. Here's what it says. It starts off with dishonorable. Okay? It says, indicating that which activities of which one would be ashamed are usually done in secret, which is true. Now, here's the word study. Paul imitates that shameful things done in secret should not be aired in public by Christians. It is the duty of the Christian, however, to allow the light of the gospel to shine upon the evil things that are perpetrated in darkness. But always, in, a, in redemptive consideration of the vile person, every revelation to the light should be for the redemption of the one who acts in darkness. Amen? So I would, I'm going to give you a little homework. Look up Galatians 6.1. That tells you the spirit. There's only two people in that. Okay? I might teach on this sometime down in the future. But look on Galatians 6.1 about the redemptiveness. That is a great scripture, and it'll tell you how to act. Amen. Go to Matthew 18 first, then go to Galatians 6 1, verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest how? By the light. For whatsoever does manifest is light. So that word reprove here, it means, uh, is like uh, it was in verse 11, to show wrong, convict, and find refute, and which are manifested by the light. But a light exposes the true nature of things. How many know that's true? Let me give you a couple scriptures in this. This is John chapter 3, verse 20 and verse 21. To everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds are reproved. That's the same word here as in 13. 
But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be what? Manifested, that they be wrought, or done, or done and performed in God. Amen? So, so it, it, it just kind of gives you an idea here. All things are, light, are reproved. How? Oh, they're manifest by the light. You know when a light comes, you could be in a dark room and all of a sudden light, you put a little man, boom, it lights up. Wherefore, he says this, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give ye light. Amen? I love that. You know, awake. Awake, thou sleepest. Amen? Okay? Now, I'm going to say sleepest first, and then I'm going to tell you to wake again. I'm going to kind of switch it. Okay? Sleepeth. Now, listen. This is what it means to yield, to sloth, and sin. If you don't remember anything in this teaching, remember this. To be indifferent to one's salvation. To be spiritually asleep, secure, and unconcerned in sin. So those are the things the body of Christ need to awake from, okay? Now I'll give you the wake. It means to rise up and stir up and awake from sluggishness. Amen. My friends, listen to me. I got a little side note that the Holy Spirit just put on me. This is not the Greek. This is my opinion, which is absolutely worthless. I just want to put this out to you. This is what God told me while I was writing them down. The way things are and are going in this country and throughout the world, it is not wise for us to be indifferent to one's salvation. We need God in our lives and the lives of our family. So awake. If you guys are sleeping spiritually, awake. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. God bless you. Verse 15. See then that you walk, and here's my text, finally get there. <laughs> See then that you walk circumspectly as not, not as fools. Circumspectly is accurate. Walk accurately. Walk diligently. Walk exactly. You know, this is used in Luke, uh, well, I can't read my writing. I think it's 12.3. I apologize. Um, the word perfect is in uh, in Luke, but I'll give you 1 Thessalonians 5 too. For yourselves know perfectly what? That the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now that word perfectly is the same. Redeeming the time. We're back to the verse, of, or back to Ephesians. Pardon me. Redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. How many know that's true? Amen. I'm sorry, I had those two scriptures. I was going to put them on there, but I didn't. I apologize. But anyways, you can look at look at it's in the book of Luke. But look into First Thessalonians, and it'll talk about that's a uh, five two. First Thess five two, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. So it goes back. You know, this is I mean, excuse me, that's Ephesians. But the five two says for yourself perfectly know what that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. That's what I get for talking fast. Sorry, folks. I always want to squeeze this in. Now redeeming the time. What's that? You, are you redeeming your time? It means to make wise and sacred use of every opportunity for doing good, so that the zeal and well-doing, as it were, the purchase, like we purchase money by which we make the time our own, like we purchase it. Why does God want us to do that? Because the days are evil. Amen? It's true. Full of labors, annoyances, hardships, full of peril to the Christian faith, and steadfastness, causing pain and trouble, evil, wicked, and bad. That's what it says. Because the days are evil. Full of labors. Do you ever get annoyed at all? The world's full of annoyances, my friends, and hardships. <laughs> the days are evil. And I'm sure you guys can, um, you can really understand how that is because we all go through stuff. It's like, oh my goodness, come Lord Jesus. But listen, don't give up. Just stay in there. Stay in the saddle. Verse 17. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Unwise means don't be without reason. Don't be senseless. Don't be foolish. Without reflection or intelligence. Act rashly. Don't be like that. Imprudent, inconsiderate, misconstru or misconstructed, unlearned, ignorant to the divine truth of the Bible, or the, the gospel. Amen, which is the Bible. Ignorant as the truth of the gospel. Don't be unwise in that. But understanding what the will of the Lord is, that thelema, that's what it means, the thelema, the will of the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what the will of the Lord is for your life? You need to. Ask him, and he'll tell you. Amen? So, what is the will in the Greek here? It's what understanding what the will, commands, precepts, inclinations, desire, and pleasure. Pray in the Lord. And the Lord will give you, you know, he'll, to start with, we use verse 17. We broke it down. To start with, 
Watch what happens in your life. Watch what happens. Ask for God's will. What do you want me to do? I'll be honest with you. You probably have heard me say, I thought I'd be a pastor was the last thing I'd be doing. But, you know, God wanted me to do this, and so I surrendered to my life, to him, you know. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest pastor or anything. I'm just simply saying I just said, okay. And I've been doing it for 30-plus years, and I'm glad I have. But it's every day is a new day. Ask him what the will of the Lord is, you know. And listen, if you can't go out, you're not a pastor, that's okay. Get into your prayer closet and be a warrior. Believe me, God will bless you. So I hope this ministered to you. I know I ran through I had 10 pages of notes, so I wanted to try to get through it. You know, I'm sorry I was just talking too fast. But, Father, I pray you bless these folks. I pray no weapon formed against them will prosper. Lord, we're coming into the holiday season. Let us maybe even take these messages and tell our family. So, Lord, bless them. We praise you in Jesus' name, your glory. Amen. Thank you, my friends. Thanks for your patience, and thank you for watching again. God bless. I'll see you next week. Lord, Lord willing, take care.